a long day, my man. I, long day. I can only imagine. What do you got going on? Uh, <laughs> well, but you know what? There, there's a point in time when you realize you have, you're getting everything you asked for. It's the best to be explained it, bro. I'm getting, I got everything I worked for, and it's like, oh, that's what it is? Oh, man. I, <laughs> what I'm sure that I thought about. It. But no, right now, do like I, so I used to do Monday, Wednesday, and Friday like live streams in the morning between podcast tour, coaching clients, a clubhouse show, my own training for my own body because that's a priority. Coaching my, my, my son's football team. Like I seriously get up in the morning at six o'clock. I rock through the day. We're going to get done. When I'm done with talking to you, I have another client call until five. I, I just literally ended one. I just, just ended one in case I was late. And then I'll get done at five. And then from five to six, I have a window, which I'll probably eat something. And then I got to drive at like 6.30 or 5.30 to get to my son's practice. We go six to eight o'clock. I coach for his football team. And then I come home and I get maybe an hour dinner. Then I get an hour to sit and I go to bed at about 10. I get right back up. And that's do it, it again. And you just go on and win the day, bro. That's it. Yeah, dude. Win the <laughs> You're day, 100% bro. right. Everybody. Like, this is what I asked for. This is, you know, I just had the busiest day at work. You know, I'm in the mortgage industry. Yeah. You know, probably 200 phone calls a day. And then, like, oh, my God, I got, I got in at 6.30. Like, hey, you can't miss this. You got to, you, know, gotta you go almost got to, like, slap yourself up. Be like, let's let's get this going for sure. I try, uh, I try to take naps, man. I try and take naps when I can. If I can get, like, a 20-minute rap play, you know, professional football. And even in college, man, we had, like, training camp. And I'm telling you, if I don't know if you guys ever did training camp or you did fall camp, you will sleep. Five minutes is gold, bro. If you have like, hey, dude, we got seven minutes before the meeting starts. Let's go to, I'm out. Like, you're done. Seven minutes helps. It's not that bad right now. But when you get to a pace, you've got to take care of, of being on a tick. And here's the thing, everybody. This is not my life at norm. This is my football practice just started. I was traveling. Typically, is a good, a good flow. But at the end of the day, man, success loves speed. And when speed kind of picks up, some people go, oh, my gosh, hit the brakes, get me out of the car. And I said, uh-uh. I said, buckle down. Let me hold on. Let me figure out how to manage and navigate these turns with these tires and this, this vehicle. And then later I'm like, all right, let's go faster. Hell yeah. This is the pace. It's the path to get there, man. That's it. Yo, strength hurts, speed kills. All day, baby. Shout out Revolution Athletics. Um, yeah, so, I mean, you know, I, I know, I know a little bit about you. You – you led the Pac-10 back when there was a Pac-10. Shout out the Pac-12. Yeah, yeah. Um, Aging me, bro. Why you gotta make me feel old? Why you gotta make me feel old, dog? You gotta do all that. Bro, you wanna feel old? All right. You wanna feel old huh. from the get-go? Here's a, okay. here's, a, here's a date. Do you remember it? October 26, 2005. What were you doing? October 26, 2005. I'll tell you that what you were doing. We were no. playing against – what team were we playing against? That would have been my senior year, October. We were playing – October. Who were we playing? It could have been anybody. It could have been Arizona. It could have been Cal. It could have been you – know, You were playing Thunder and Lightning. I was looking – I was trying to see if you are uh, <clears throat> trying to get get more of your stats from – you were playing Bush and Lendell White and the boys. And I was, I was oh, wondering – Oh, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Ooh, my senior year, we went 10-1. and one. The game before USC, Fresno State came up to Oregon, and I got a high ankle sprain. And I fought the entire week to come back. I got one play in that game, and I, I, couldn't, I couldn't play. I tried to run. Bro, you can't chase down Reggie Bush. He shook us with a sock on, dog. He <laughs> lost a shoe. He <laughs> lost a shoe. He shook the entire team with one sock on his foot running down the – it was amazing. But, no, I didn't actually get to uh, legitimately have a, a game. And that's the sad part is, like, that year I was. I, I led the pack in sacks, tights for loss, forced fumbles, fumbles recovered. But I was sixth in total tackles. Is because of that game. Like I think if I if I play in that game, it's a good shot if I lead the Pac-10 and even tackles. But I was ball in my senior year. Yeah, I mean the eye in the sky don't lie for sure. I was watching your tape. I'm a little bit of a football nerd. You know, I was I was the guy two two three years ago watching Trey Lance throw it in a bucket up yeah. there in North North Dakota State. I mean, mm. it kind of brings me to like my other thing. Like <clears throat> obviously, you play for the Steelers, Bucks. And for Washington, the now Washington football team, and everything obviously yeah. didn't go your way. You know, I know exactly yeah. how you feel. Life doesn't always go your way sometimes. But then you got into like, we're gonna we're gonna go back and then come all the way forward, and then we're gonna slap it back together. Then all of yeah. a sudden, fast forward twenty years, uh, fifteen years, whatever, twenty seventeen. You're an American Ninja Warrior, and yeah. mm -hmm. I mean, just thinking as a, like I'm a competitive guy. I wrestled in college, played football. Also played lacrosse, big Long Island thing. I know a lot of people in the West Coast don't play lacrosse yet. Um, mm -hmm. But how much, like, did that get your juices flowing enough for you when you were at Ninja Warrior? Yeah. 
you know what? I, I get more, I, I was thinking, it's fun. It gets you going. I love discomfort. Uh, it sounds odd, man, but you don't, you, everything that's easy, it's like when you work out, you actually aren't getting better until it hurts, discomfort. So it was fun because it made me uncomfortable and it made me test my body. And I'm not going to lie, bro. It was hella cool being on TV and hitting the buzzer and like making all that cool stuff happen. I get a greater kick out of being on stage though. You put me on stage for an hour. I get to run around and tell stories and, and give people lessons that change your life. I'm telling you, man, that's a whole different, that's a whole different push. But yeah, Ninja War was a blast, man. Three years. I always made it from the city qualifiers to the finals. Couldn't get to Vegas. I was in Los Angeles. I'm in the LA area, which I'm, in, I'm actually in San Francisco, but like the LA, I would do the, um, like the, you know, because of different like six cities, I was always in LA. And those ninjas in LA were like stunt doubles. Like they're different breeds, man. I'm, I'm a six foot one, 230 you know, pound man against these people that are like five foot eight, like a buck 60 doing backflips off of cars and being in Transformers movies. You know, like I'm not, yeah. so I can get, I could do, I can hold my own a little bit, but it's hard to get to that next tier. But it was, it was super cool. It, well, the coolest part was, when I played football, I mean, play, your family's up in the stands and you can win. You can kind of like, you can see them a little bit. Whereas what's cool is Ninja Warrior, like doing the whole thing, they're right there. Like I could see them, they're like 15 feet from me. Like, yeah, they're walking along the side. It was awesome to be able, I, dude, I think there's something special when your kids have like a parent that they're proud of, you know, they're, there's something cool when the parents and kid can go like, ah, oh, it's my dad, like, you know? And so it was, For my sure. kids never saw me play. Like my youngest doesn't remember me playing, but that was something that they'll all remember sitting there watching the, this crowd behind dad on TV and being the force, first former NFL athlete to hit a buzzer on the show, like at the top of the, the noise and all of it, like getting interviewed, like that locks something into the kids and they go, man, that's my dad. Like, so, so that was a really cool experience. I'm not going to say it wasn't in any way. Oh, for sure. I mean, it sounds like a really cool experience. I, I mean, you know, it's just nice to compete. I think that's what you like to, might like to oh, do yeah. the most. I know that's what I like to do the most. I compete against myself every day. I mm -hmm. I went to Long Island City last night, had a, had a nice little time on a rooftop, but I was still hitting the pavement at 7 a.m. this morning. I didn't want to. You know, you don't want to be yeah. there, but then all of a sudden you get that second, third step in, all of a sudden you're four minutes in, then you're eight minutes in, you're you like, go. okay, like, <clears throat> let's burn it. Then you're calling yourself some explicatives just to keep yourself going and, you know, you just keep going from there. Uh, you were talking about performing, and that's how it really gets your juices flowing. And I would love to get to uh, see you on stage in person. I've, I've seen I've seen it on the website, and you've got some powerful stuff. Can you just go into that a little bit? How how you really became? Because if you think about it, after your first NFL se uh, after your first NFL season, and everything went downhill, you had to re you know rebreed yourself you, you had do. to kind of like yeah. reset refocus and if you really think about it you're technically the first customer ever of makeshift happen and how'd you do it for you and how'd you go yeah. through that process yeah so so i was my third my third year I, I tore my shoulder and came home and anybody listening like this is this is where i i i'm a flip out of me and i'm gonna bring you guys on a little journey and this is one where i don't know what you're doing in the world wherever you're at in the world but give yourself the moment to listen for the next five-ish minutes maybe 10, who depends on how we go. But I want you guys to grab what I'm about to go into because if there's anything that I, I am incredibly passionate about, it's about giving you back something that you might've lost. And so for me, when I was playing football, dude, I had this internal sense of limitless power. We have it at some point in time. It's like the sense of like, I am untouchable. I feel strong. I feel powerful. I feel confident. I got this, right? And then what ends up happening is we get to this moment where it's like, ah, I lose it. And I don't know when, whether it's by choice or by chance for me, it's by chance, man. I'm playing against the Philadelphia Eagles as a Pittsburgh Steeler, and a guy lands on my shoulder, tears my shoulder out. Next thing I know, I, I don't have a career. Like, my career's over. The season's over. I'm done. And you come home, and you, and you try to find yourself. If anybody ever felt this way, feel free to put hearts up. What it looks like is you've been doing something for a long period of time. I've been, um, I've been a mom. I've been in the military. I've been in sports. I've, I've had a job. And, and at some point in time, you wake up, and I don't know when it was, but you wake up and realize, I'm not doing that thing anymore. A kid went to college. I got an empty nest. I, I left this job for new and I'm not doing that job. I started a business and it's maybe not what I want to be. Or I left the business and started nine to five. No matter what it was, we leaned into something and somehow I woke up and like, we're not doing that. And it's a difficult place to be because I have all this pride anchored in this thing I was doing and it's gone now. Like now I can't even do it. So who, who am I? What do I, where do I fit? And that was the thing for me and athletes who struggled at big time because we usually do it from a childhood up. It's who we are in developmental years. 
And so for me, I left the NFL. And it's like, who am I without the NFL? Who is Anthony who's not a Pittsburgh Steeler? Who is Anthony who's not a football player? And at this time, I had a, a wife. I had three kids. I had, you know, a, a guy, four-year-old, newborn twins. And I was going to find myself. And I, I honestly ruined my life, dude. I, I neglected the things that mattered most to me. I, I couldn't keep a focus on the family. I was going to also find a way to be great. And again, like, how do I get that football greatness again, that power? And I, I went into what I call a fog, man. The fog is that space where I get up every day. I'm doing that thing, but I don't feel like I'm actually going anywhere. And it's kind of like actually being on a treadmill, but I'm trying to get a mile down the road. I'm <laughs> dog tired, but I, I'm not getting any closer, but I'm dog tired, right? And we move through our life this way. We sometimes spend vastly too many years here. We'll sit there and make excuses. It's, it's what's easier to be here. The desire or the thought of changing something is way too heavy. So I, I'm not going to do that. So we get stuck. And what happens is we start to have this, this really empty existence and it gets tiresome and we end up like, ah, right. So I realized I was doing that. I got stuck in that fog post football doing this thing. I was divorced. Uh, I wasn't a good father. I was out of shape. Gym business wasn't that great. I lost the football field and I had nothing. It took me, shoot, it was eight, six years, eight years, dude, eight years to wake up. I lost my mom. Oh, I was man. going through being not a, not a great dad, like everything. It wasn't until I got to 20, Shoot, 2016, man. I woke up January 1st, 2016. And I'll, I'll, this is true, man. I, I, at this point, like I was married, but I was now divorced. So I had like multiple partners. And it was like, you know, I would have a bunch of girls I was talking to. And you think it's cool. And it's not. It's draining, man. Like, there was a sense of like, I was, I was so far from my faith. I was so far from the kind of men I would want my daughter to be with. I was so far from the kind of men my boys should mimic. And I just didn't like myself. And I got to the point of finally realizing, like, this, this isn't a life well lived, man. My adoptive mom loved me because I was adopted when I was 14 from, into an all-white family, really poor. But, like, I, I had this family that loved me. And I was not living in, in, in unison with the alignment of the vision I had for my future. My mom raised me to do. And so I woke up. I was like, I had to change these things. And I made dude, some massive internal shifts. You say this makeshift happened. I say it because that's what I had to do in my life. And we all have to do when you got to get to another level. It's got to make something happen. To, to like, if I say I'm going to go to the bathroom, it's not making something happen. It might be making S-H-I-T happen, right? <laughs> but like to make something like, ah, so cool happen. It's like you want to stand up and beat your chest. It's something different. And that level, you got to step out. And, and I realized for me, I wanted that. I wanted a better marriage. I wanted to have a better family. I want to be in better shape. I want to have a great business. I want to impact the world. I want to do these great things. But I wasn't that guy just yet. And I had to figure a way to do it. And it took me... Dude, after the eight years, 10 months. It was a good 10-month window, and things started adjusting. It got to the point where I got my marriage back together after three years divorced. So my wife and I have this incredible marriage. In October, we're celebrating literally five years back together in this cool Thanks. new marriage. That, thank you, man. That is, like, my heart, to be honest. Uh, my happy wife. To do, it's like, a happy life, my friend. Happy wife, happy life, happy kids, happy body. Like, we're, it's, dude, it's so anchored right now. On top of that, I was able to do the American Ninja Warrior thing, be on TV, and then I started taking this, this concept of my life and realizing, man, a lot of people are still in these places. A lot of people are still in that place where they get up every day on this treadmill and trying to get somewhere, or they have success, but there is another level, right? There's, like most of my people I work with, they've got something going. They're making decent money. Like they got these six figures and above. They're doing good, but they're like, there is more. There is, ah, there's more, right? And it's this thing of where I want more, but I don't want to feel guilty for wanting more, so I just kind of stay here. But I was like, no, there's, it's more, right? So I step in, I show them like, here is how you get to that next tier, next level, next press. And when you do it, it creates this, it creates a life, man, that is so crazy cool that it's hard to believe it's yours. <laughs> and, and so when I get a chance to go out and I hop on a stage, like my whole goal is how do I pour something out to plant a seed? And like this, I'm doing this now. I don't care where you guys are at in the world. My whole purpose right now is can I plant a seed? And the seed is simply something that has to do with it's time for me to go get more now i may not be the person to water it drewski may not be the person to water it right maybe it's it's your husband your wife maybe it's a book maybe it's a community that you join but at some point you got to get the seed water and that looks like finding a way to look at like who am i now who do i want to be and how do i start becoming that person little by little and that's that's the work i did that's the work i teach that's the guidance i take people through and it does turn into a healthy body, a better marriage, a, a better business, more money, more impact, more influence. And life becomes a thing that is super cool. And it's not like woo-woo and esoteric. I'm a football guy, man. 
So I'm a strategic, I, t I take steps that are clear actions. I don't like to like, how do you feel today? Like that's part of it, but really it's like, hey, who do you wanna be? What does that look like? Like, what does that actually look like today? What, what do you do today so you know that it's making you like the person you wanna be tomorrow? Like how we do something today and focus on today what we need to be tomorrow. And if we do that properly, you start seeing things start creating momentum, get to a good flow and all of a sudden, man, like I got the body I wanted. I'm, I'm in a good marriage. My, I'm healthy here. Like, I feel happy, man. Like, I, I, you know, I'm making some more money somehow. Like, it's cool. And all synergistically flows. Because here's the key. And I'm talking a lot, but I got time. You got plenty of time. Found, all the time in the world, my it. friend. Take a I, breath. I don't, know. I don't know. But I'll, I just, I'm excited, dude. I love, I love what I do. I'm not going to lie. It's a blast. Here's what I know is, is the idea of the day, it's not, it's not what you know, people. We are all seeking this consumption of knowledge. We get what I call shelf esteem which is I buy a book. Well, I got you know, all these stinking books here. I put on the shelf. I feel good about myself. I got a book, right? Oh, and then we'd stop there. We don't consume it. If we do consume, we don't apply it. It stays on the shelf in our mind, but very few people put it into the world, about one to 3%, hence the one percenters. And so what ends up happening is if you get to the point of realizing that there's gonna be a moment in time when you can check yourself, and this will happen today, my friends, there'll be a moment where you know what you're supposed to do. You know exactly what you're supposed to do. And you also know where you wanna go. You know what the dream looks like. I can taste it, I can see the car, I can see the house, the paint color, the, the clothes I'm gonna fit into. I can see that, right, there's a separation. And you wake up and you start moving towards it and it gets to be like three, four, five o'clock, maybe it's seven, eight o'clock where you're at. And you go, oh, you know what? It's been a long day. I know I'm supposed to do this thing, but it's been a long day. I'm tired, you know, I, don't, ah, I can do it tomorrow. I'll do it next week, right? And here's the thing, you have to ask yourself this question. Does the person who has what I want do they make this same excuse right now? Nope. That's the question, bro. And if you, and if you can sit back and breathe that in and go, oof, that's what it should become clear to you. It's not what you know, but it's who you are with what you know. That's why identity is so big and so important because when it's who you are, you will not go to bed out of alignment. You will not go to bed. It hurt, it'll hurt you more to not do this thing than to do it. Because most people go, I, I know what I got to do, but like, oh, it's so painful. I got to do this. I got to do that. And the other, on the other side, somebody goes, oh my gosh, man, it'll hurt me going to sleep tonight knowing I didn't get the workout, didn't eat the right food, didn't make that call, didn't do the emails. Like, I gotta do it, it's who I am. And when that's how you flow, man, life flows for you, way, way more for you than to you. Yeah, you start taking responsibility for yourself. And that's what, like, it took you, told me six to seven years. I mean, <clears throat> for me, it took a long time as well. You know, I wasn't, I was blessed growing up. I really was. Yeah. Grew up Long Island, New York, some of the best places, best place you can live in the world. We foreclosed yeah. at 13 years old. I didn't know what they, that was. You know, they just said we were moving. All right, mm. whatever. Sounds good. Yeah. But then you start mm. growing up and you see that and you go through these challenges and, you know, you don't really like know what life hits you until you get smacked in the face. And for me, it was when I was 19. Uh, my dad passed away from leukemia and didn't really leave us with much you, you know the feeling you got yeah. left completely by yourself and thank god someone a great family took you in and i'm sure the blessed people but you know you really you have that hunger you you know what it is to feel be to feel forgotten to feel uh what's the word i'm looking for to feel like you, you less than man you feel you don't you'll feel worthy you feel less than you you feel like you're left behind man yeah and but you got that hunger yeah. at the same time and I didn't know how to channel that hunger. Thank God, you know, thank God all the boys I in the 631 that really helped me mm -hmm. out because I don't know where I'd be without them straight up. But, yeah, man, somebody. you got to – that hunger is really what drives you. And I, I'm one of those guys that I got pieces of paper written on the wall with the daily goals. No one's going to help you in, in this life besides yourself, which is absolutely true. Yeah. But the people around you yeah. and the people you keep around you – characters as people Good. who are around you that's yeah. going to help you elevate in this thing yeah. called life and it's a beautiful uh, life for sure now look at you you yeah, make, these, you make I, these fine burgers wife and kids are back daddy you patty's man you're in the best hey, coast I, I, uh, you're not in the best coast the best coast is in the east coast by the way i heard you true. say that with warner the other day oh um, no it's the best coast bro it's, it's, it's why is it there's the thing if it was really the best coast on the east coast why is it so much more expensive to live here not true. No, I'll wait. Go ahead. I'll wait. Uh, not true. My taxes are just <laughs> as high in Suffolk County as they are in LA. Oh, okay, maybe, maybe, but our true. house is expensive. 
It's, it's warmer here listen, too. Your houses I've, are a I've lot more on. expensive, to say the least. Exactly. Because you got the seventy-two exactly. in sunshine. You know, people exactly. are walking around here in December. Like, I'm not cold. <laughs> I'm just thinking about something I really agree with. Shout yeah. out, Bill Burke. We got, we got, we got that, that snow, man. It's a different world. But no, I agree, man. There's a uh, it just all playing aside. Like, I love all coasts, man. But there's there is truth to it, man. You are the the. I don't think we're the average of the people we surround ourselves with. This this is an interesting. This is a. It's not a difference, but it's a similar link. I believe we are the average of the expectations of those we surround ourselves with. And the reason I say it's because I've, I'm around people who are like, you know, let's say, let's say you make, let's say you have a half a million dollars right now and you want to make $2 million. Well, I can hang around with millionaires. People assume I want to hang with millionaires, but what if it's a bunch of millionaires who are cool with being a millionaire? One million, that's all I want. And this is just a simple, I'm not, money's just an idea right now. I got you. I would much rather be with a person that says, you know what? I got $250,000, but I want to make $2 million than the person who's making a million. And the reason is because the expectation's higher. I will push myself. My crew will push me past the level of where I've set this level. Because if that two fifty dollars person, they're going to get to $2 million, at some point we're both going to get to a million. And if they want to go farther, they're going to go beyond the person making a million. It's just a perspective shift. And so I, I do agree. You got to have people that, that think at the level you want to go. If they don't, then it's not the best. And I think we sometimes get... We get lulled to sleep of not realizing that, that that's a, a reality for a lot of us. And we, we look at our circle and do, here's the hard part about the honesty in that. This means that sometimes you must leave a circle of acceptance. And as human beings, we desire to be desired. We, we love acceptance. We're, we're, you know, pack people. We love humans. And so it's a fear of going, I'm going to leave this, this group and go to a new one, but I'm accepted here. If I go here, well, what if they don't accept me and I'm by myself? It's a fear. So people easily stay in that bubble there and they stay small and they stay confined. Their dreams are limited because they don't want to leave this group of acceptance. And so I've always been a guy that says, you know what, like I, I have the ability to make friends at all levels. And I found in my honest experience that people that are where I want to be or where they go, where I want to go, they, they love people hanging out. They want to bring them along because it's, they say the road less traveled, man, it's a road less traveled. I want company. But so few people are willing to leave their bad friend groups or bad, you know, or less than circles to go to a new one. So when you do leave that pack to go to a new one, you'd be surprised. There are vastly more people accepting you in than you think. So, yeah, elevate your perspective of, of where you want to go and actively go seek those next groups, even if it scares the crap out of you. And it will scare you for sure. I know it's, I, I got FOMO all the time, my friend. It really does. And it's so funny that you're saying that because sometimes you do got to leave some people behind, but there is some people that I'm sure you kept along the way for yeah, sure. There's, there, there's definitely a few, you know, I, I know I'll definitely have a few brothers that I'll always have for my life, but yeah, it's yeah, tough to make that step. I'm having trouble with it right now. To be blatantly honest mm -hmm. with you. I really yeah, am. you got you got you got, you got a big you got a growth. It doesn't mean you lead everybody. I got the core of my friends. I've had some second grade. We're talking thirty years. I got friends that for thirty years, right? And the thing is, is they have a space in my life in a certain area. When I just want to hang out, don't talk, like no business, no nothing about Anthony, the guy that's on TV and the coach. I just want to go hang with my friends and be dad. Talk about barbecues and like the sightings on the house, you know, in the car we got. Seriously, just that. Yeah. Those are my people, man. It pulls me out of the monotonous aspect of what I do in that realm. But if I want to climb and grow, I absolutely got to be around people that I'm sitting in a room and I go, I don't even know if I can add anything. Next month, I'll be in, uh, in a, a, I can't remember to say we're going to, we're going to be in some place next month with a group of people. <laughs> and I realize I can't say anything about it, but it's put together by Brennan Burchard. He's a buddy of mine. So there's, it's him. You got him, Mel Robbins, Jay Shetty, Trent Shelton, Lewis Howes. Um, Russell Brunson, Jeff Walker, all these amazing minds. Gabby Bernstein's there. Marie Folio. Like, it's this crazy group of incredible humans. And I walk into this room and I'm telling you, I'm like, I don't know what I really have to add to all these people. These guys, these are gangsters. Like, they've been in it for 15, 20 years in the game. But that dude, it lights me up to go in there and be like, hey, guys, I'm stupid. Teach me stuff. You know? Right up. It's just, it's, just, it's just levels. It's, and it's not that I'm, I don't know anything. I'm being, I'm borderline being facetious, right? Nice. I know my stuff, but I would be, it'd be naive to say these people haven't been in spots that I, I want to be, right? Yeah, Brendan's training Oprah's team and he's, he's really working with Usher and his crew, right? There's a different levels of humans. So when I step into the realm of what it is that I do professionally, I've got to be in higher rooms and I, it's, and I got to go and seek that even though it feels uncomfortable. And if you don't do that, then you are not giving your dream what it needs. You're, you're honestly, I think that people are, they're, 
doing a disservice to their dreams to not get your body and your mind to a point where you do the uncomfortable things. You got a vision, you got a dream of something to get done, and you don't go do that thing that's different, that scares you. You're, you're honestly, your you're, you're dream's crying, man. It wishes that I had somebody that was the right person to harness it. Yeah, honestly, I couldn't say it better myself. You really got to just <clears throat> sometimes step step on someone's neck. And if it happens to be you metaphorically, you should go and do it any day Every of the time. week. Because it's yeah. and cause it, you're just going to sit in your own, you know, what are you going to do? You're going to go back to your parents' bedroom and uh, you know, have your normal well, life where you actually want to do something. I definitely yeah. want to do something. I'm just looking for the path to do it. And meeting someone like you yeah. is definitely a great start. And I would love to see you personally on, on stage and see what's good. So come down to, uh, I'll be at Funnel and Live in, shoot, in two months, September 22nd, I'll be in Florida speak. I think like 5,000 people speaking at Funnel Hack and Live. That's the one that I know is like a public one you can go to of people that I know. I got a bunch of speeches taking place, but not everybody can go to them. I'll be in, I'll be in Las Vegas, I want to say, September 30th, I'll be in Las Vegas speaking at another event that's open that people can go non-corporate. There's a few of them you can go to. But yeah, bro, at, at minimum, you want to be in this world and figure out how this thing works, funnel hack in life. It's seriously, you got you to go check it out. There are different breed of humans down there. And I can't, they got like, they do it right with the stage. Bro, I'm going to have, it's an experience when I talk. It is an ex, it's a visceral experience. Everything but touch and smell. Like I will hit every sense that you got with craziness. Uh, it's going to be an Orlando, Florida show. If you go to Funnel Hacking Live or just see, search Funnel Hacking Live 2021, you'll find out how to get tickets. Uh, right yeah, at the Amway Center. I don't know where it's, it's, I don't think it's Amway. I don't know. I don't know. It might be. It's like wherever it'll hold 5,000 people. Yeah. It's I, a cool I, place. I, I used to live in Orlando, ironically. Maybe I'll take, maybe I'll take a quick trip back. Take a see. little trip, man. You get it to be a quick one because I, I get in, I think I speak at like two to two to three in that window there. And then I hit a flight at like six and I'm shooting right back. So it's going to be a window of like, I, I'll catch you. I'm flying from Maui to Florida and then back home. It's a weird world I'm, I'm flying through. My life is crazy. Yes, that, sir, very well, welcome. that sounds great. Doesn't sound bad it's at my all. my life, man. It's my life. We, we all do a bunch of weird stuff. Uh, you know, my wife and I were just talking and I get this question a lot. And people say, you know, what is your definition of success? Actually, I'm going to ask you, what's your definition of success? Genuinely, and there's no right or wrong answer. I'm just curious what you deem it to be. For me, personally, my definition of success, um, well, <clears throat> immediately, I want the house. Mm -hmm. I want the wife. I want the kids. Yeah. No doubt. Those are the first three. Preferably that yeah. house. Um, South Shore, Long Island, right by a couple feet away from the water. Nice. The, the wife, the girl I went out with last night, she knows exactly who she is. Uh, uh oh, she watching? No, she's probably selling selling commercial real estate at the moment, but uh, she'll oh, okay. see it. Um, and then honestly, just being comfortable with myself and what I've done in this life. I mean, I know I'm gonna make money. Uh, I'm yeah. happiest I've ever been right now. There's just a couple pieces along the way. I really want to yeah. get myself started in, you know, the podcast game and do that as my side hustle. But I like it. For right now, success to me is just in being present in the moment and enjoying everything that's coming at me because I'm getting yeah. a lot of opportunities and I'm definitely going to make the most out of them. I just gotta got to keep doing what I'm doing. Yeah, you got to do it. Is that uh, a good answer? What a, it's a great answer. There's no right or wrong. It's whatever you deem. I am not a guy that has a scale that I'm going to compare you to. That's not how I'm built. I found years ago that everybody has like this this scale that they borrow from the world, which is like, oh, the world says this is great. And they work towards that and they get it. And it's either like, oh, it's not what I want, or I feel empty or I feel, I feel sad because somebody else tells me that I could have done more. So I'm like, bro, set your own scale of what is great and success and then work towards that and compare to that. So even if somebody does come along and goes, oh, well, you didn't do this. You go, oh, that's cool. <laughs> I wanted this. So I'm still happy, man. Let's go to work, right? So you stay in joy. Sure. What I have found, usually people will say like, I want freedom. And then I started thinking about the word freedom and like, I find that people are free, but you can't always exercise your freedom. So like I have, my wife has friends that they're free. They're free to choose a different job, but like they're stuck. What I've found is like, I believe success is control. Just control. Like, can I control my reactions, my emotion internally? Can I control my day? Like I could easily have said, Hey, Drew, man, I, I can't make it today. I can control that. Sure. I can control when I choose to work, when I don't. I can control my schedule. I can cancel. I can, I can move. It's freedom, but it's my ability to control the exercising of my freedom. And so 
it doesn't, I don't think it has to be, I don't think it has to be money. I think it can be though, right? Because if I control, I don't know, maybe I want to control the thermostat. I might want to have a house with air conditioning. <laughs> like the, again, there are things that will give us that sense. But for me, I'm like, I just want to have control. And it might mean for some people, a hundred thousand dollars a year. It might mean for some a million. It might mean a billion for some, whatever their their version is. Yeah. But it's your version. And I believe it's control of like myself and the environments that I put myself into. So I don't have to go to a job I hate and have to be in situations I want to be in. If you have control, man, I feel like that that brings that joy, that peace. And I personally deem that to be success. Yeah. I mean, it just like a lot of people, I feel like a lot of people answer that question. And they'll go right off the bat. I need the financial freedom. Like, yes, financial freedom is a thing for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's in America, there's probably no better freedom. You know, if you're able, just like, you know, you, you're able to walk up to wake up today, say, you know, I don't, I don't feel like doing this. I won't do it. That's great. Casino Casey, Casino T Casey gets it in Franklin. Hazenwa, I think I might have said that right. Hazenwa, like he gets it. Yeah. yeah, I'm seeing you guys' comments. By the way, I just I like to, I always I always like when we're live, let, let people know like I see you. Like when we're not like the comments go by, I don't not see it. It's in front of my face on my screen. So I see you <laughs> for sure, you gotta not. Yeah, and they're 100 percent right. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, like success is is control for sure. That's that's definitely a great point. But it all depends on what your you know what your mindset is. It's all here. It's funny, like the thing that's really controlling you the most is this thing. There's like, for me, it's like two people, you know, got the negative side of Kenny and then you got the, the positive side of Kenny. Luckily it's around 70, 30 positive, but um, mm. that's who's really yeah, controlling that's you. So whatever the hell you want to do, go do it. You know, you want to be a clown, go be right a clown. You want to go, you, know, yeah. you want to go be a powerful speaker in front of millions of people like yourself, which is inspiring to do. And I, I think I can definitely, inspire to do that one day that sounds like an awesome yeah. thing that could be another goal on there gather a group yeah. of people and make them feel motivated you do yeah i love 100 man. it's funny you said that there actually is there are studies that show that i think it was a national science foundation found that of our thoughts every day 80 percent of them are negative and 95 percent are repetitive so it just keeps hitting it and it's it's a negative thing but it cycles and we got to control it man there's there actually is two people there's a good book called uh this what is it called singer's book the untethered soul. It's that's a good one to read, you guys. If you haven't got a chance, um, right now. See, Franklin's down. got a question. Franklin says, "Do you think that the definition of success changes based on a phase of life we are in?" And I fully agree. Because I mean, here's the thing: when I was in in high school, success was I'm gonna get the girl's phone number, dog. You know what I'm saying I'm gonna get some subwoofers in my car, and I'm gonna get a college scholarship. And then in college, it was like I'm trying to go to the NFL. And then at some point, I had a kid at 20 years old, and I'm like, "Well, success is." Can I be a good father and get good grades and still stay active? You know, and then it's like, can I play in the NFL? And then I got out of the NFL. It's like success is, can I build a life after the NFL? Like it, it changes. And yeah, so yeah, Casino says the book changed life. It's such a good book. But yeah, yeah there, there is, there are definitely, I think we have to, that's why I think it's good to set your own scale. Because what if I'm in a phase where what success should be for my life is different than the person over here, but we're in different seasons, different stages. So I think it's what's really, really big to specifically stay in a space where like, you got to own whatever your thing is the stage right now. Someone says, are you willing to do the extraordinary to make it happen? Ah, you stole it. I was going to do that one. I was going to read hey, it. Hey, <laughs> go ahead. You get it, bro. Get it. Uh, I'm just messing around. Are you willing to do the extraordinary to make it happen and to build that freedom? That's a powerful question. Um, there were some, there were some years in my life, you know, 23, 24 years old, just fully granted. I'm 27 now, be 28 in December. Um, nice. Where no, the answer was absolutely not. Right now, at 27 years old, yes, not even a question. Like a freight train, it only goes 60, but I ain't stopping. Yeah, just keep it going. You know, it's funny is I, we all have that. I, there's a good uh, shirt I have. I'm not wearing it now, but it says incremental, not monumental. The hard part is doing the extraordinary. It's kind of like the monumental. And I think a lot of people like think I got to get up every day and I got to be on every day, all day. It, and there's something to that, but to be quite honest, the work that I do, my goal is how can I get you to use the same fuel, maybe a little bit more you're using now, but vastly more effective and efficiently. Do the right things with the right plan that you have certainty around, that you have trust around, because you'll stay consistent in that much longer than the push, push, push. And one day 
I don't feel like doing it. So I don't do it. I beat myself up. You suck. Why are you doing this? You suck. I don't know. Uh, and I wait here for three, four, five, six months and then years. Right. Yeah. Whereas the reality is it's like it's extraordinary to build it. It's extraordinary effort to strategize. What are the steps it takes to become who I want to become? And on that process, build that thing. If you can take the time to be extraordinary there, then it becomes just incremental build. We're already doing things in our life. It's just we end up having the wrong or poor helping habits or we get tired too early because we're blasting and stopping and blasting and stopping and starting and stop. It's like when I sit down with people, I'm like, look, it doesn't have to be this overhaul of your entire life. And it should be. We're going to make small shifts, small adjustments. And if you do that, you'll get that freedom and you'll have more control in time. Yeah. And I uh, love that people got questions coming in, man. Yeah, I dope. love the questions. But to touch on that quick, uh, difference of sex, targeted for a different stage. Love that. Um, all right. So I had a, I had, <clears throat> I've had a coach before. Her name's Allie Melendez. Great girl. You guys should, uh, you guys should get in touch with each other. I'll, I'll link that. She's a great person to know. But she taught me that there's literally, you know, there's literally masculine days and there's feminine days. And like, you actually have to like figure that out in your head mm -hmm. of what days are what like my attitude in life is to win the day no matter what mm -hmm. you have to find a win mm -hmm. in the day and i would like to get yep. it broken down by you in the shift um <clears throat> world and how to get those small goals day by day because you know sometimes i wake up and you're like all right kenny it's gonna be a it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a feminine day which you know you don't want to admit to yourself but it's okay it's like all right if i know if i get well, why is feminine bad i don't think the feminine days it's, you said that funny i was like ah oh, it's not so bad don't it is in my head because like i'm a bit. competitive freak and i know that there's other people working harder than <laughs> dude me. my wife is a competitive freak and she's got feminine bro she will murder me most days she's got veins going into her teeth nowadays she's crazy <laughs> I get what you're saying though. I, it makes sense. But the, the, what I looked at is, is and how I run my life, I kind of run like a business. This should help. This will help you for sure. Everybody yeah. is I look at this as when you have a business, if you get up and you have to tell the business what to do today, it is the worst situation because on a day you don't feel like doing it, you're not going to tell the business to do it. So like you won't do the marketing, you won't do the sales, you won't have the conversations, you won't do what you said to do. Here's what I realized. A great business like McDonald's, like in and out has systems. It tells you what's got to be done on what day you wake up. All right, I did this thing today. Let's get to work. I, I'm telling you right now, I do not know what tomorrow has. I, I, could, I, I didn't look at my schedule yet. I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow, but I know the way my life is built. I told my life what I have to do in advance so I can show up for the day and just be Anthony. Feminine, mass, whatever it is, it's got to get done. I'm not operating off how I feel anymore. It's got to get done. And I structure my life in a way to where it doesn't overwhelm me. I feel pride when I get completed with the day. But things get ticked off. And so now it's like, yeah, I wake up and I'm, I have days I wake up and I go, I don't want to do anything. But my dream can't have that. I may have to be the feminine, but like the beastie feminine today. Dog. Yeah. You know, like I may have to and I don't that. even mean it like that. I just mean it like spiritually. Like Kate Kravitz says, what does that mean? Feminine days. Like, you know, some days I'm not going to get after it as, as much, you know, on a masculine day, I'm up. So I, I work, I still work a regular job, guys. I'm nine to six. I don't have it like Anthony yet. I can't wait to that day, knock on wood, uh, mm. where you are creating your old schedule. And that's a goal for me. But yeah. just because nine to six, I'm obligated to Freedom Mortgage, shout out Freedom Mortgage. That doesn't mean that yeah. I'm not up at 6 a.m. And I'm doing things from 6 to 8.55. And then I'm not doing yeah. things from um, <clears throat> 6.05 and up on a masculine mm -hmm. day. I'm up till 11 o'clock doing things where I want to do. I'm on a feminine day. I'm relaxing. Bath bomb, bro. He's, he's, he's bath bombing it up. He got the oils on his face and cucumbers, bro. You get that? <laughs> I mean, the face is good, but it ain't that good. You know, just. Yeah, I know it, the feeling. Mine's not that great. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is this? How is your uh, How is your view on coaching and mentoring changed as you have grown and gone through the ups and downs? That's a good one. Ooh, that's uh, cool. I, yeah, yeah. When I, so I, I've always noticed that at any level in my life, when I played professional sports, I always had a coach. And when it's weird when you look at the rest of the world, people go, oh, I don't need a coach. That means something wrong with me. Well, hold on a second. When I played at the highest level in the world, I was one of the best athletes in the entire world, right? And, and I'm obviously, there's a collection of thousands of us, but still, I'm one of them. And, and what happens is I'm on the field and my coach, he got bad back, busted knees. You know, like he got, he, that boy's out of shape. He barely runs. However, he benefits me immensely in my ability to do my job because when I see right here, what's in front of me, he sees the entire field. And so as I've kind of progressed through what I do as a coach, my job isn't, I'm not 
support, like I don't make you feel better about yourself. I simply show you what you don't see and then give you the guidance that you're not paying attention to in the process. And to be quite honest, when I coach, dude, I'm not coaching off of how I feel today. We have a very specific method called the shift method. It is a process that everybody follows. And I coach to the method. That way, what you're doing is not based on how I feel today. If I'm masculine, I'm feminine, or I'm on, I had a bad day, it doesn't matter. Here's where you got to get done. Here's the best way to get done. I can get us moving through this process. And so my coaching has gone from why, you know, some coaches coach football at the park. Hey, guys, you run that route off the cuff. I got a playbook, bro. Yeah. Right, here we go. Here's the playbook. <laughs> it's going to work. I'm coaching. Yeah. Let's do it, right? <laughs> it's and third and three for the three. I'm going to the playbook. I don't even have to pull the playbook out. It's Spider 2 by Banana all day long. Shout out John Gruden. But, yeah, no, playbook all yeah. day long. I love that. I would like to know what that playbook. I got to get myself signed up for sure. Just out of just out of the curiosity, and mm -hmm. I suggest anyone should do the same, really, because I do see the reviews. It does look like some life changing stuff. And you're Easy right. Work, you man. can need everyone needs a coach. I don't care if you're 21 or you're 55. It's good to have guidance, and I think that's starting to become the thing. And in 2021, because of, not a lot of people want that back in the day, I'm sure. They did. They, they, there's an ego thing that sits in there. It's very interesting. I, I've looked at ego as an interesting bubble because most people give this negative connotation. And I believe ego stands for everyone's greatest obstacle, EGO, hmm. because it really becomes the hindrance for me moving and giving myself permission to improve. Whenever you look at a coach, I think most people, it has to be an inherent, like, my coach is awesome. He's a person I can feel proud or she's a person I can feel proud telling somebody that's my coach. And people, I think, have this thought that if I say I have a coach, that means I'm less than. It's not the case. Like, a coach is somebody, in my opinion, who if you have the right person, has a process that can be duplicated. They're a person that can say, here's my coaching scheme, coaching process, whatever it is. So you're really, like, at the end of the day, people aren't just, they're not hiring Anthony. They're hiring me to guide them through the process that's been created that works for them. That's it. Coaching is no different than parenting, no different than training on a process at work. It's just we call it something different because it's just human to human, right? And so for me, what I've looked at is like I, I, I remove myself from the ability for me to mess up my process. So it's done. It's dialed in. It's filmed. It's structured. There's work, it's, we work ourselves through it. But the cool thing is where, where I coach people, I don't coach you along specific strategies as much anymore. Like business stuff, I have that insight. We have programs for that. But the majority of people, right. I say, look, you probably already have the book you need, the course you need, the information. You probably got a lot of that stuff. I'm going to teach you a system that allows you to get to the point of having control, like genuine control of yourself and being able to do today what tomorrow needs you to do with consistency, with discipline, with focus. And we even like, I'm talking, Brian, I've created my own planner that we teach people to plan from because most people buy planners. With no clue how to plan. I got a planner. What are you going to do with it? It's Don't nice. Some things, it's it? Dude. And so, like, we, we take who, who you want to be. We break it all the way down, like, the daily things it'll take to be that person, while also the things it'll take you to achieve your goal. And we infuse it into your life in a way to where you don't have to wake up and go, what do I got to do today? What do I got to do today? It's already done. You get up. I do this. I do this. I do this. I rock and roll. And so I get to the back end of my day. I made ridiculous progress. I feel stupid proud of myself and I have clarity. And here's a big thing. I can go ahead and focus on a TV show. Like, you know, people say like, oh, millionaires, they don't watch TV shows. Bro, I watch TV all the time. Like, <laughs> I, I got a but life I watch? live where everything's, I like now I'm watching Fringe. And okay. it's the one we would do it. I mean, we, we picked up Manifest. I'm a sci-fi guy. I like sci-fi stuff. We also are finishing season 11 of Shameless. But like, I live my life in a way to where I get a ton done. But at night when I'm with the family, I'll pop a TV show on, right? It's not the end of the, it's the end of the world to do it, but most people don't run their life efficiently or effectively enough to become the person and get the thing. So they end up just spinning their wheels. They get that treadmill we were talking about earlier. I know. It's tough. It's tough. Someone it's says, tough how do you rest and recover? Way. Yeah, it is. Um, someone says, how do you rest and recover amidst running so hard? About six months ago, I started waking up earlier, working on myself and feeling exhausted. Oh, okay, Kravitz. It's a good, it's a really, really good question. Hey, Kravitz got good hey, questions. Kravitz. Got dope questions. Here's what I've noticed. Uh, exercise, right? When I first start working out, I, I noticed that in the beginning, like I can't breathe, right? You can't breathe. And you push yourself and a little by little, you start to elevate your ability to have a higher heart rate. You know, you can, you can get more muscle. You're stronger. I believe it's the same thing for our mental capacity for things we do. But just like working out, you can overtrain. If you push it too hard and just do it because you got to do it, 
and they're becoming difficult. And so what I'm big on is like, we ease things in, but we do with a plan and a structure that allows us to build over time. But yeah, you, you shouldn't be exhausted. You should also, here's the thing, the biggest problem people have with structuring um, goals and projects and ideas, they, they look at every waking hour and say, how can I get it done as fast as humanly possible? Like there's a sprint. And when you sprint, think about sprinting. You can only sprint for so long, you will literally have to stop. You have to, that's why the 400 kills people because they're dead, you're sprinting. They literally you can collapse jog for miles, much afterwards, yeah. Right? And yeah. so what I do is I, I like my planner is structured out where I'm always four weeks out. And I have projects that stay and some that go to the future, but I break them down to the hours in a specific way that allows me to go, you know what? I have 13 hours of this over the next five weeks. Great. Tomorrow I'm doing hour one and two. Two days later, I'm going to do hour three, four, and five. Maybe next week I'll do five, six, seven. I just put it all out. And so what happens is I may have four or five projects spread out over five days and I may do nothing today, but tomorrow I got to work on four projects hour to hour to hour. Right. And it's all going to get done in time. So what happens is I don't have that spinning in my head. When I, when I, when I put my book down, I sit and watch TV. My brain is not going, I got to get it done. I got to get it done. It's not done yet. Like my brain knows, Oh, it's going to get done in time because it's where it's supposed to be. Be right. at peace, my man. And so when I shut it down, I shut it down. So I don't get exhausted. I get my workouts and I don't have that pressure. It's self-imposed the pressure of it's not done. Yet, it's not done. It's where it's supposed to be when it's supposed to be. And so now when you get up early and you do your project, it's not like I got to get it all done in the next two weeks. Like it might be the next two months and that's okay. Yeah. It just has its space. So you'll, you'll get less exhausted if you start structuring your life a little bit different that way. Well, that's the beauty of having a plan, right? Mm -hmm. You can, it you really can work to that. I, if you have a plan, like, you know, <clears throat> she said it in just in regards to working out, but you know, like, yeah, if you wake up one day, like I'm going to run a 5k today. All right, go, go get them. Did you do it in 25 yeah. minutes? Did you do it at all? Did you, how far mm -hmm. did you get? Just work from a goal from there. Yesterday, I want to do a 5K. Unfortunately, I only did, I was a mile away. Two miles, 2.1 miles. Yeah. My time was flat. I was usually like an 8.15 guy. I was at 8.30. Okay, tomorrow we're going to be at 8.25. And you just got to work from there. Set goals for yourself, but set realistic goals. I think that's really yeah. the main thing, right? Okay. Yeah, well, realistic's interesting. It's realistic to you, but you know, I, I say you got to play one inch out of control. You got to play one inch out of the comfort zone and stretch that inch over time. Yeah. What was this question? Somebody says, has the way you coach and mentor your program changed since you first launched it? Yeah. I'm curious if you feel like you've learned more by your own process, your coaching has evolved. hundred uh, percent. I think the, the best thing you can do is to realize that nothing is set in stone. We're still, science is still coming out on psychology and neuroscience and, you know, the way we operate and, and social stuff. There's always things coming. And so my job isn't to say, you have to conform to this. My job is to say, how do I get my clients to their goal? So we'll put things out. And if you go into my programs, if people go into my coaching programs, they'll, they'll notice that there's like, there's times when like I have a beard and then I have like a different shirt or I have like a different lighting or different background, genuinely different backgrounds. People go, how is that? I go, well. Because I go through stuff, I have different questions pop up from people going through it. And I collect those questions. And I realize at some point, you know what? I've got this question a bunch. I'm going to refilm this section and put that answer in there. So it diminishes the need for that question. Or, you know, what? I've learned something different about the science that I didn't realize was necessary. I'm going to adjust this. So the train stays the same. The train start stays the same. But I might change out what's on one of the one of the cars, you know, I might change out a, a blue, you know, con and can, whatever thing, the big thing, I may change it for a red one, right? I may adjust some stuff, but it always comes with me realizing I've got to stay in tune with my humans because that's what I'm doing it for. I'm doing it for the people so I can go and say, oh, you got to do it. This is how I said, do you got to do it, conform, conform, or go, all right, there's a level of which I got to realize that people are learning different or they have a different question and I got to continue to improve. So yes, my coaching has always involved, it's evolved, it's always been this kind of working progress, like uh, perfection, and there's beauty to that, man, because I'm always learning, and it keeps me, and I can also allow me to say, oh, this is a whole new thing I can venture off and teach about, so I'm constantly trying to find ways to upgrade. Awesome. That's, that's, that's amazing stuff right there. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shift over to, I'm going to shift over to your home life a little bit, and you know, you've been you're in the football community. You've been 
teaching you're teaching your kids <clears throat> football right now I, I what do they play football all year round in california must be nice no man don't do all that Let's, uh, it gets cold we have one regular season everybody else man um i just i was looking at i was looking on the gram the other day that uh that pro football camp you've been doing it for so many years yeah, now well, talk man. about that yeah man i so when i got done playing the game my agents realized they have access to current and former football players so like if they put a football camp on in colorado springs they can get kids to have real NFL guys come out and teach them the game. And so what I did years ago, I was like, yeah, I'll come out and hang out. I just fell in love with it, man. So like my youngest son, he used to go to it. And when he aged out of it and ended up doing, he's put, doing track now, my youngest son filled right in. So I've been going and taking my boys for the last, yeah, I think 11 straight years now. I've never missed a year. And I go out for a week and I speak and I talk, I sign autographs, I do radio spots, all, all the things they need me to do. Cause I realized that there's, there's something that can be planted as a seed for these kids way earlier than if they get it early enough, it'll literally shift the entire trajectory of their life. Like the way they view themselves, the way they view possibility, there's something unique. Hey, from Germany, I appreciate it. German, South Africa. Uh, there's something unique to that. And, and I, I think for me, if we can continue to go back and try to find a way to make the next generation better, like it, it allows the life to be better. Cause those kids are gonna be running my kid's life. You know, they're gonna be part of their world. They may be a boss or a colleague or a coworker, you know? So, like, be be able to do something that, that's good for the world, I think. You do that, man. It's a whole different monster. Somebody says, you mentioned being on Ninja Warrior program, the Pinky Finger Strength. Oh, Joan Moore. Do you know about Pinky Strength, Drew? No, I don't. Tell me about it. Oh, dude. Uh, oh, yeah. She loved the, the seed. So, for, I do a podcast in the morning called Shift Starter Daily. That's an eight-minute podcast. But there's one about Pinky Finger Strength. I'm in tangents. You guys want my daily podcast, shiftstarterdaily.com. You can get the podcast every morning. I, I go on. I just I get an eight minute like like rant of inspiration in the morning. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm, I'm getting on yeah. that for sure. Get it, bro. Shiftstarterdaily.com. Shiftstarterdaily.com. Got you. Yeah, and I got to get to a meeting in four minutes. I'm going to give you this, this little lesson here, and and it's great. The question was how do you build it, but conceptually based on Ninja War, when I started doing the show, I asked some people how do I train? They're like, hey, grip strength. It's like, well, what do I train in my grip? And they said you got you got to make sure you train specific fingers. And I was like, well, okay, which finger? Now, Drew, which finger, if you had to guess, would be the finger I should probably work on if I want to get my grip right? Uh, I would go thumb or pinky, for sure. That's your weakest, right? Yeah, pinky. I was thinking of something else in my head for someone to do something in the background. Anyways. You're going middle um, finger? No, no, it's pinky. Oh. Because we're talking about pinky fingers. Obviously, it's why your head thinking pinky finger. I said pinky, right? And it's, here's the thing most of it will grasp is the pinky finger attached to a lot of the muscles from the outside of your hand. And if you cut your pinky off, you actually lose up actually upwards of 50 plus percent of your grip strength. Like take the pinky down, try to grab something, right? Just do this. It feels weak, doesn't it? Like just grab the pinky. It just feels like there's something you could do it. And here's the thing. Here's why it's weird though. Well, now it's that I'm weird. doing it, it's weird. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. It, it, and the thing is, it's the insignificant finger. A lot of us have, this incredible strength that we have not paid attention to or forgotten, or it's just too insignificant in our mind, but it's the strongest part of us. And so when it comes to showing up in the world, like I'm really big on like, what is your pinky finger power? And, and it's not really about, I think part of it is, yes, you can develop it, but I think it's just noticing it. To begin with, it's just noticing it. And then you can polish up to give it to the world. You may have a diamond. Diamonds come rough. A diamond comes uncut rough. But you get that thing cut, man, then it's a beautiful, shining diamond. I believe we all have that pinky finger power, but some it's a rough diamond. And so like developing it means finding out what it is first and then figuring out how to get that thing polished and put out to the world so it can shine. Wow. We can end on that note. That was great stuff right there. If you want another awesome video in our Black Excellence series, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there.